And in three, two, one, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode four? I think yeah. four. Yeah. Episode four of the 12 podcasts of Christmas, number eight. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Francois De Nation. I'm Andrew Sorsdahl. I'm Kim Crawford. I'm Joelle Gadet. Uh, yes, today we have an awesome guest with us. This is Joelle. Uh, he is a friend of ours. He uh, co-hosts uh, Moose Fest Music Festival. Why don't you tell us a little yeah. bit about yourself? And the, uh, and the Sit Down Podcast. That's, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, so we, I am the CEO of Moose Fest, actually, and a host at the Sit Down Podcast from Funky Moose Records. Um, A little about myself? I could go on forever, dude. Like, where do I begin? Well, friend? tell us maybe a little bit about... You know, we don't have a lot of podcasters on our podcast, so a little bit about how you got started into podcasting. Sure. Yeah, so that all started, honest to God, a few years back. Um, I ended up leaving my job at work and was kind of like homebound, pursuing a new career kind of thing in like in finance, um, which I'm still doing. But through that, there was a lot of hometown uh, home time. Right. So like what else? I didn't want to watch Netflix or any of that shit. And I got really into podcasts like YMH, Two Bears, One Cave, as as you're a fan of as well. Yeah. Both, um, yeah. Some Bill Burr stuff, Tiger Belly. All the, like, comedy, all the comedy all the, podcasts. Yes. All the comedy podcasts. Like I'm, a, I'm an avid watcher of these like on a weekly basis. So I would always tell Mark at Funky Moose Records about it. Like he's my best friend. We're always talking and he's got zero interest in that kind of shit. Right. And uh trying to get him like into the into the culture of that mm-hmm. and one day he's just like you know why don't we start a podcast like we're always talking about music and we'll, freaking you name it right so that's kind of how it started we were just like fuck yeah we'll just put a camera up and like what do we talk about let's talk about music because it's like funky moose records so the first like i don't know a couple months dude it was terrible we're literally doing zero research the week of and until about half an hour before, we'd sit there and open up our laptops and say, okay, what's like in the music news? So we're basically just reading off like news headlines and putting our two cents in it. It was brutal. It was so bad. We did that for about 10 weeks, maybe, I want to say. And there was a musician who reached out to us and was like, hey, dude, like, can can I come on your show? And we're like, hell yeah, hell yeah you can, right? That's cool. So it all started from Paris Pick. Uh, She was like the first uh, musical musician guest on our show. And we just, whatever, talked stories and of touring and and whatnot. That's that kind of like set us in motion for where we are today. Um, So since then, we've had guests like the Sheepdogs, Theory of a Dead Man have been on a lot of local musicians, but we're basically nationwide. There's been one guest who wasn't from Canada. And the reason we like we brought him in was because his album was being released in Canada. So that was kind of like we were okay with that kind of loophole to come in. But yeah, dude, like we're currently booked into like February with like a guest every week. Right. And it's not like none of these people are like superstars. They're all just indie musicians trying to like. Well, I mean, having those bigger acts on, I think is really cool. When you're procuring a bigger act like that to try and get them on to come on your podcast, what's the sales pitch look like? Who are you talking to? Like, do you what? have an in with the band themselves, or do you, are you talking with like, a, honestly, managers? A, honestly, a lot of it is just trolling them. Yeah, troll them on the into slide into their DMs and be like, "Hey, I'm Joel with the Sit Down Podcast. Like, we have this show on a weekly basis where we talk to musicians. Um, do you want to come on the show?" And sometimes we get zero replies more times than not. And and others are like, yeah, I've heard of you. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Like, what are you thinking? And then because of the pandemic and stuff, a lot of that, like we started it pre-pandemic. I think we were like maybe a few months in. We started it before March of 2020. But I mean, because of that, the guests was like all Zoom calls, right? Because you weren't allowed to be in house or anything. So it's still kind of going like that. We have had... Um, musicians come in house like Kit from Cadillac came in he was the first one brought his guitar played a few songs since then we've had Saul the singer came in house 
and yeah, that was we, a good one. I watched that one. That, that was really good. Yeah, that was like, uh, uh, so then as you can see, if you look at like one of the first episodes and how shitty it is, I would highly recommend don't waste your time with like the first freaking maybe 20 episodes. Once we start getting like guests on, you can, I would pick up from there. But um, it, it's just evolved. Like I really want to do those in-house things again. The show's constantly evolving. It's never been the same. Like we're coming up on a hundred episodes and That's not awesome. once has it been consecutive with the last one. There's always like a different audio thing or a different camera or something, right? We're constantly yeah, changing. We're still figuring it out, man. Still figuring it out. hundred percent. And we're, and we're like almost a hundred up, which we're coming up on a hundred episodes. I, we just recorded the 94th or fifth last night with, um, Graham Templeton. Yeah. He's from town here, right? Th yeah. That's, that was a fun one. I, I really enjoyed that. Cause I know he's a fan of the same shows that I watch. So it's kind of like its own little click there, but um, coming up on the hundredth episode is going to be around the Clash at the Cap 2 kind of time frame. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do to make that hundredth episode special. special. Okay. So I, I will talk off air, you guys, but- Yeah, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, um, I, I'd like some ideas or input, or we can talk about that here too. Um, I, 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 that, you, you already brought it up and we're, we're kind of collaborating on that. Uh, let's talk about Clash the Cap 2 and why we're bringing yeah, it back yeah, and so what's going on there. Oh God, I get, was it 2019, I guess? Yeah, it was the year, it was, no. It, year two was supposed to be the year that COVID hit. So 2019, was so 2018 was our first year, I think. No, because the pen. 2019, I thought you guys did that. Yeah, yeah. Spring was it? 2019. Oh, 2019, right, because 2020 was. Christmas right, 2019, 20. Right. 19 was the last regular Christmas, and then that spring, yeah. everything hit the shit. Hit the that was right. that spring of 2020. Spring right. hit the shit. Yeah, so we, uh, spring hit the right, shit. It was fall of 2019. So we right. hosted a Battle of the Bands in Saskatoon. Um, it went well enough. I mean, it was pretty well received. Um, I think every, the thing is, like, it, it wasn't this huge event, but in Saskatoon specifically, there is a bad taste in the music scene's mouth with regards to Battle of the Bands because there was a, another company that came in and just ran it very shadily. Artists had to sell a certain number of tickets to, to, get, involved. to get involved. Really? Yeah. And like, they didn't, they didn't see any money. The prize is really shitty. And like, it was basically just extorting these artists to make a bunch of money. Uh, um, so I, I see a lot of that, yeah, dude. A yeah. lot. I, I, I don't know if you want to bleep it out, but there's like... One that bothers me real bad is like Sastel Max. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pisses me right off, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think yeah. that there's a lot of... I. It's just a lot of it seems like you could maybe peg it as good intentions, but I don't think it is. And like, Yeah, I, I think, again... I, there's, I a difference between a, so there's a difference between an event going poorly because it didn't work out or, you know, you weren't prepared <laughs> enough. But I think that a lot of these times having benefit to the artist isn't the intention going into it so. right there's like a hidden agenda there Absolutely. right 100 yeah. percent. i'm I, and i'm not for that at all like no. i'm i'm an avid music fan so before the podcast started i was like really stuck in like my 90s metal rock like metallica godsmack i like nickelback theory of a dead man right like that kind of genre um and there was like nothing you could say or do to make me change that but then since we started the podcast, I've had to like open up my mind a little bit about different music. And since then, dude, like all I listen to is indie music. Like that's it. Like uh, Saskatoon based, like well, Canadian based really. And it, it's been huge. A lot of, I used to push country music away a lot. Like, so growing up, my mom was a performer as well. She helped like produce and performed at the Country North show in Prince Albert. So like, Every day, all mom did was sing country music, like Shania Twain, Reba McIntyre, all that kind of stuff on a karaoke machine, right? Like freaking six hours a day. There was always like Reba or Shania playing and it was mom singing and like tweaking with the with the vocals and echoes and all that kind of stuff. So I really pushed it away and went like towards metal and like Prodigy. I, I liked Prodigy a lot too. Um, but then recently, like I, I've, my mind has been opened up back to that. Like, especially in the last couple months here, I've actually listened to a lot of country, like Will Ardell, you know, amazing musician, amazing. I love his style and his. And the storytelling and his music. Hell, like he, hell gets, yeah. he gets that, that, that feeling and that emotion across without being it's super real. wordy. It's yeah. real. He's talking about like his experiences and, and trying to project that in, mm -hmm. into the music. And, and it's just real. 
I, I love that aspect of it. I'm not, I, I love songs that tell a story, but I don't want a bullshit story. I well, want pl- something that's relatable. You know, and, I, they, yeah. I think especially with that genre, like Will's, and we had him, we actually had him on the podcast on our second episode of this nice. year's podcast. Nice. And we talked a lot about outlaw country versus like, you know, more pop country, pop country prime country kind of music. I think obviously there's a lot of storytelling element. I mean, for me, a lot of things that I'm liking out of the indie music right now, and we talked a little bit about this with Will, is like rock stuff right now, and a lot of the best stuff coming out of this area is rock music, and it's a fucking battle to try and get anywhere with a rock band. It, These right? days, yeah. yeah. There's so- when, when single bedroom pop artists are able to fucking sell out a stadium, why pay f- five guys yeah. to do what one guy can do is... I mean that's the like you know the shitty way to look at it, but right there's well in in Saskatchewan and what's especially on the radio too. right like if you're not I I feel Saskatchewan uh, I could be way off base here and wrong this is just my personal opinion it's very clicky oh, yeah. right very there's I so. don't feel like the uh, I I'm not gonna name drop anything but like I feel like some corporation entities throughout Saskatchewan that are trying to help promote. Saskatchewan music, right, isn't doing that. Like they'll pick and choose who they want, who they like to help promote. They're not helping everybody. That's my opinion. Does no. that make sense? I, I, no, right. I don't, and I don't and, and I'm not okay with that. Like in in my opinion, like who are you to decide who's good and who isn't? Like if they're putting their heart and soul in it, like it might not be the best music or anything, but why would you deny them that anyways? I, I think the big thing for me that's a huge litmus test is. I mean, I don't like to categorically judge things like, is it produced well? Because like, well, not everybody has access to the financial resources to make things sound right. good. But there are creative ways to produce a high quality product. And I mean, with certain- Without breaking the bank, obviously. With certain acts. Uh, one act, obviously, that you we both work with is weapons. Um, one thing that I commemorate those guys on huge is like, very rarely do I see in an indie artist, and this isn't knocking anybody else that isn't weapons. Right, you know, yeah. everybody's committed, but like- these guys are fucking committed. You yeah. know, like, I, I think that, and this was very much, to me, this is very, this is very pervasive in, like, early prehistoric productions. When we started, we had essentially no real-world experience. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. We, we were thankfully learning. produced a good product because we worked hard at it. Well, we were also, we, we weren't just learning about filmmaking obviously we were learning about filmmaking how to make a good product there or how to make a better product there so i think we started you know with a lot of promise obviously um we were also learning like how to run a business and how to how to like organize people and all there's all these skills that we did and so how to do it right and so when you're pitching yourself to a client that early on you have to be convinced in your own ability and you have to take it very seriously because if you're not taking it seriously, why is anybody going to hire you? Just as like, I think for guys like weapons, it's, it's serious. It's like, I don't care if, if we release a music video that gets 500 plays, I have to take it as seriously as if the bare naked ladies contact us and ask us to make a music right. video. I, I can't be like, Oh, well this guy's a shit artist and this music video is not going to get any views anyway. So whatever, we'll just phone it in. Fuck him. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. And, and I think that that's, that's what I see from them and what I, you know, I think that that's very akin to how we started and taking things seriously and wanting to produce a high quality product and, you know, trying to push ourselves and reach out and build relationships and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And that's, I see- that's huge. The building relationships part of that too is like another way another how level. we've gotten the guests on the show that we have. Yeah. Right. Like getting to meet you guys, for example, and like the guys at Skull Creek Studios and everything like we'll mm-hmm. toss each other referrals yeah. back, back and forward. Right. I think that's huge. And it's 100%. not like, there's no hidden agenda there. Yeah. It's like, hey, I can connect you with this person. Do you want to, like, do you want to work with them or not? Like, well, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, like, it, uh, I'm in a referral group, so I kind of have, like, am inundated with this all the time. But, like, it makes you as an entity or a person or a business owner look amazing if you have people you could, it's like, oh, I need this. Oh, well, actually, I know a guy who's reputable and can right. help you with whatever you're looking for. So it helps, helps you guys, but it also helps us when we can be like, oh yeah, you're looking for some publicity. We actually know these guys who have this awesome podcast. They can help right. you with your, or they can help you with your your merch yeah. and setting up or, a store, or and distributing and vinyl records. Exactly. Or if you need a di- right, and, like, and I think it's really nice to grow together. I know. Yeah. There are obviously certain instances in which you know you start building a relationship with someone, and like 
it's it, it's we've been very fortunate the people we worked with all are very good at their craft for example like aspen i have no issue that if any artist contacted me and said do you know a recording studio that can put out a professional quality product be easy to work with affordable and creative i'd be like yeah you know, yeah yeah we do for we me, did it's the not same like, thing i'm not like i really want to give aspen this work but i don't know if they can pull this off like you know i don't yeah. I, you know i don't yeah. want to ruin i'm not gonna I'm not going to stake my reputation just to pass somebody a referral, but when you have people like you Quality. guys and like yeah. Aspen and other people that we work with that are serious and yeah. I know that they can do a good job, it makes it so easy to build relationships and pass referrals because I know that at the end of the day, you're going to be serviced well by getting passed right. on to that like, client. Yeah, because there's no hidden agenda there. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, exactly. And you know the work that they've done already. Um, no, I agree 100% on that. And And we've gotten, you know, uh, most of our business, especially on the music side particularly, has been a lot of word of mouth up to this point. And I think that's kind of how you have to build organically because when you're working in a creative industry like this, I mean, obviously, one thing that's hugely advantageous for us is that our portfolio is naturally advertising, you know, because I'm not an accountant. Like, it's like, oh, look at how clean those books are. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's really tough. Like, you you have to actually meet in person and get to know someone when you're working in, like, a non-visual medium. Yeah. But... I can just throw up a sizzle reel and be like, this is what we make. Look at how fucking awesome all this yeah. is. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, you guys put out great content. Well, and like, you. it's I, I freaking love it. I'm a huge fan of prehistoric cool. productions. 100%. Every it. time we're t I talk to a, an artist like off camera, I'm like, you guys, you know these guys? Have you heard of them? I'm trying to cool. like send everybody your way for sure. Because I, I think it's well, the work you guys it. do is, is kick ass. Like, did you reach out to the referral that I, 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 I have to, you. I have to, I have to do that yet. I'm going to, I am going to do it. We've been, we've been talk, talking about that idea and we want to kind of come to the table with a bit of a, a, plan. a bit of a proposal, a bit yeah. of a plan. Yeah. So we're, once we have that solidified, we're, we'll, we'll oh, reach dude, out. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you guys to get that one. I think yeah. that'll be a huge one. You know, be cool. be and, I, and I see like, um, you know, cause we talked a little bit about like the SMA you were talking about, like, yeah, the, the SMAs are coming up here right away. I don't even know the date on when that's coming out. I think it's in the new year. Yeah, sometime in the new year. Um, but, I, you know, I look at a lot of the... There's really good content coming out of Saskatchewan. And one thing that I'm yeah. I'm never afraid to say, like, wow, that's a great-looking product that somebody else produced. Yeah. I think we can remain competitive with them. Do you, do you ever see a shitty product, but you're still a fan of it? Like our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think... Like, it's, no, it, but you know what I mean? Like no, you ever uh, see and you're like, oh, you know, this this could be... I this think, is what I would do here. And then have you ever like just... I think for us, it's... Sorry. If, I, I was going to say, I, th I think it, because we can hyper-focus on the production side of it, if you're talking about something that's produced in terms of like the production quality isn't there, but the like the content, the content quality is, is there. Mm -hmm. For me anyways, I can kind of separate the two. And it's like, I might be able to say, oh... Uh, it doesn't look great, but they're it's a it's an it's they're having an interesting conversation. I'm enjoying right. the content, because um, to me the the harder thing is having the good content and being interesting. It's easy enough to like buy event like figure out a camera eventually or right. buy new mics or yeah. whatever. Like that's easy to if you, when when you get there to you know up your production quality. The, For sure, the difficult I, thing is uh, keeping dude, the content. I, I struggle with that with our show all the time because it like. The one of the things of our show is that there is no format. We're not interviewers. Right. It's mm -hmm. legitimately just hey, like I'll talk about what you had for breakfast this morning if that's what you want to talk about. I don't care. I just I want to get to know you. That's what a lot of the show has been. It's like picture meeting somebody for the first time in in a club or a pub or whatever, and you just get that one on one with them, and you're meeting for the first time. That's what the show is because that's legitimately what's happening. Like yeah. it's it's much of a a DM. Hey, we got this show. Do you want to come on? And if they're like, yeah, let's set up a time or whatever. And then it's like, boom, Zoom calls on, we hit yeah. record, right? There's not much that I cut out of there except for the fact like, hey, can you introduce yourself and say this is number whatever? And I'll cut it and put it at the front of the show. Right, right. That's like basically the only, like as much yeah. of the editing that's being happening. Um, and then it's like, like, then where do you start? So it's like, well, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. And well, then I, I feel like for myself anyways, because I'm also I love like podcasts are one of my favorite mediums to consume content. Um, and, and for me, all the podcasts I, I like the best, it feels like I'm just part of the, this conversation that's happening right. in a room. Right. And so if you can achieve that feeling, I think a lot of the time, that's what I think a large segment of people who watch podcasts, that's what they're looking for is 
is just, just feeling like they're sitting in, sitting out and hanging out with. It's right? a, my theory is it's the same thing as why uh, like video game content is so popular. Like watching other people play video games, it's like if I think back to my childhood, so many of my memories, of my friends are sitting and watching someone else yeah, yeah. play a game, play play a and game, trying to figure out and, like how and, do you pass this level? Yeah, together, exactly. Right? And, and yeah. so I think it's like similar to podcasts. We have this nostalgia for this stuff that we used to do that we right. don't really do as much anymore and that fuels the pop popularity of those and, two. And, you know, kind of to circle back talking about content in general, um, I'm not a I'm not a consumer of podcasts in general. Like I watch a few Joel Rogan episodes if there's like an interesting guest on that I'm, yeah. you know, dying to he hear from. He hates your mom's house. I don't hate your mom's <laughs> house. No. <laughs> you love painting. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I he, really don't like gross house stuff. It's not for him. None of the things that they do are for him. He doesn't, when I say hate, I don't mean like he is rallying against it yeah. and wants to get rid of it. It's no, just, here, just he just would no never interest. watch an episode. I would never watch an episode of your mom's house. Two Bears, One Cave, however, small clips where it's just like Bert and Tom just like obviously having a cameras aren't even here. We're just buddies moment. Yeah. I really like that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, that's really cool and like genuine and I like to see that. The Kool-Aid moment that everyone knows yeah. about. Yeah. Or the, did you see the music video that the, oh, yeah, the, the music? The, the dance. Uh, the yeah, dance the dance off yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. So if, it, you know, if I see, for example, SAS music, which is where I see a lot of our competitors content, it gets posted. I think a lot of time the good content from a lot of people in this province it looks really nice and it's obviously professionally done and the buck stops there. And one thing that we've always tried to push is like, because we do our own independent creative content and we try and think outside from the a box. more of a filmmaking perspective than like a videographer. Like right. we're not just here to capture really good stunning angles and yeah. You know, and like cinematography isn't everything. Like cinematography isn't everything to us. And we're yeah. trying to work on our cinematography and there are better cinematographers in this province. For sure there are. Anybody I would say who's kind of on our level, not anybody, but from the content that I see, it's like, yeah, that looks really nice, but who's watching this? Because you just, I think a lot of these people get in their safety net, their zone, and yes. they're like, just pump it out. Just pump it out more of the same stuff. It's like, I know, we're going to go to a scenic vista in nature, and we're going to shoot gonna you playing the song, singing, and we're going to make it look really nice. But the sun in the background, and we're going to have it's a like little it, lens flare. And it, like, it looks great. Yeah. One thing that I do really like to see is there are a few production companies that are probably where we were five years ago. And when they push the envelope and try something that is obviously a little bit more creative. And even if they fall short, I, I'm really, I like to see that sort of yeah. thing. I like to see, mm -hmm. um, there was a music video that was nominated for video of the year this year. And I'm not really familiar with the production uh, studio, but uh, they did like a, essentially th there's like a painted or some sort of wall where the guy's like, it's looking through a window, but it's clearly like painted on clouds and he like crawls through the window and then he stands up and knocks the wall over and now he's in a new scene. So it's like, is that okay. The, is that the uh, Alex Bent one? Yeah, Alex Bent the Emptiness. That's uh, that's Gavin Baird. That's the the guy who was in our uh, the film co-op thing the, with the pig sitcom. Oh, okay. That, that, that makes a lot of sense then. Uh, yeah. Really, really cool. I think that that concept could have been taken even further. Obviously, that I don't know what their restraints were, and lots of the time, our ideas have to get watered down because it's like, well, it's thirty degrees and minus thirty out, and yeah. the sun's almost down. And so the steady cam battery, <laughs> the steady cam battery so. decides. So, I can't speak to that and to what restraints there were, but I like to see that sort of thing going on. Right, it's not, you know, Any even type of innovation. even when we shoot, like, you know, so for example, I'll walk you through when we shot Weapons Last Music Video. I am the horizon, which was. Kick ass, my, I might add. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you. that video from me spawned from all three of us are really fan of the Foo Fighters video for what the fuck? Song Pretender. Is Pretender. When they have like, have you ever seen Pretender video? I don't think so. So Foo Fighters are playing in like this airport hangar essentially. Like massive, massive open hangar. space. Yeah. And they're playing in front of a like this red, red glossy wall. wall. Yeah. And they're just playing and then the SWAT team. SWAT team shows up and they're going to stop them and then when the music really picks up near the end, the wall literally collapses into water and starts like blasting red water and like pushes them. Okay. And they're playing, the water's blasting them from behind. I mean, our video's not anywhere near that, but that's kind of like just where that almost like the inspiration We for all it. agreed that it was a cool concept of a cool like and the song... I ironically enough, the water idea yeah. that we had wasn't born from their water idea. It no. was more the concept of the big open room. Yeah. And we've done a few of the big open room things. And thankfully, I think we've been able to do them differently enough each time. Mm -hmm. Like our Pig and the Hound video, we had our own unique style for that. This 
is has some homage to that original video, but you know, weapons came to us and they said, "Well, the fir well, first thing we thought we had a longer timeline, so the whole thing was like we're gonna find some crazy epic location just because the song feels epic, and we're gonna is shoot that this monster truck video that they showed us." Yeah, and it's like we're gonna we want it to look like this, and it's because the song Horizon we wanted to go with the big like epic right crazy cool location, and then they're like, "But we only have like." two or three weeks to like plan and shoot this to make it relevant. Well, we, we weren't sure what the time frame was. They didn't know well, when they were going to release it. Yeah. We're like, okay, hey, we need a location scout. They contact us like two weeks later and they're like, guys, we really want to just get this video out. So like, yeah, let's just exactly. keep it simple. And yeah, we're all open for keeping it simple, but we got to do something different. Yeah. We're not doing the same thing again. We try not to do the same thing again. Yeah. And, right. we, and it needed to still fit that epicness of the song. Like, without, right. the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't really. How's that go again? <laughs> I don't really know where the the light turn on and off came from. That was maybe just like on set that day. Which some of our coolest ideas come from. Like right now that we're in the room, we can see that this is going to be a cool idea, and we'll shoot it. We do like one of our big things is like, well, I'll shoot it both ways. That's one of our like key prehistoric productions. Like, fuck it, you know, it, it, it because if I have a narrative shoot, like for example, this last weekend, we had to be at an X location at three thirty. We had the location for an hour. We had our actors there for an hour. Like. There's no, it, we're going with that idea. That's the idea. Yeah, can't, Shots no might time change. To, no time to fuck around. But it's right? like, yeah. we're in this warehouse. It's nine o'clock in the morning in Regina and we have till the day is done. Yeah. To film so what do you thing. like better? Do you like, if you had, do you like the, the structure of it better? Like when you have everything planned out, your actor's there, you know, you've got an hour, let's get it done. Or do you like the spontaneity of it when you get there and an idea changes? I would, I would say the biggest thing that we've been working on in the last specifically in the last like year year and a half has been really getting good with our pre-production stuff so like the planning and so it's so that nailing it's good that to down go, right and i feel like um now that we've kind of figured out our groove and how like we're still figuring some stuff out but we, we've gotten that on lockdown a lot more than yeah. we did ever did before and i see how a lot of the shoots that we had before that took a long time or were Days that could have been 10 hour days that were 14 hour days. Right. Just because we didn't plan stuff out as well as we could have. Right. And I think what we're seeing now is because we're taking that extra step and putting a little bit extra into pre, pre planning, pre production, um, we still have that spontaneity when we need it. And yeah. we can still pull it out of our bag and it's still You're something adaptable. we use. But having more constraints or more, more discipline, I guess, uh, just lets us pick and choose when we when we're going to do that so it's it's to our advantage and not like we have to try and tread water and fix something that didn't work out and we have to be creative or whatever on the day because we didn't have time to right. location scout we didn't have time to yeah. test whatever thing so i i have a yeah. i have another question what was what would be in your memory of of all the content and videos that you guys have done what was like the biggest wall that you guys have hit while filming a video that you've had to like break through and, and overcome it. I'll, I'll go with mine and you can you go can go through it. It was somewhat easy am to I, overcome. Am I close enough to the mic too there, Francois? Right on. Um, okay. I, <laughs> Love you, buddy. I, I think for for me, the I, on a specific shoot, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ooh, that's a tough one. I think specifically not counting the old ties, bow ties one because that was like a whole other – fucking world of shit um probably on our alex shenton shoot for the last oh, video fuck. we did for him for um why what happened for chrysalis so we were filming this warehouse we shot all the, it was two parts one part in the warehouse one part at the Capitol in the empty and outside. room and on the bridge and all that shit oh and on the bridge right so we day one we stayed up literally all night like we were there from like, cause it had to be dark cause there were right. all these windows. So we got there at like six or six or 7 PM and filmed until like five, six in the morning. And then three hours later, we're at the Capitol filming the bar scene. At like five in the morning. At like, like before they opened, so yeah. like 9 AM. And we get there and it doesn't matter. It was a, who, who it was. It was a, a <sighs> team fuck up, but we ended up formatting the card with all the footage from before that before we backed it up so the that we just shot deleted. so the whole day we just stayed up all night doing was oh. deleted i mean now fortunately 
we didn't have to rebook it. We had the warehouse booked for two days. We decided that night, fuck it, let's just push through and and film the whole so thing tonight. So we don't have to come back. And we had to come back. And well, we had, I actually wasn't there. For no, that. you were gone. So then we, Fran and I had to go and reshoot everything. And the, it, once we were there, it was fine. But the wall of the defeat from after the footage was deleted yeah. to like, I'm so exhausted. I have barely like five hours to sleep before we have to go back and do it again. That wall and like getting up again to go film was a tough, that was a tough go. Okay, so was I, the- I could expound upon this. Yes. I deleted the footage. Um, <laughs> so one thing that's really important with anything, if you are capturing digital media, is the need to back it up immediately after you're finished recording. And a backup is not putting it on a hard drive and then deleting it off of a hard drive and then thinking it's okay. Backing up is having something in two places and it's something is not backed up until it's in two separate spots. That is a backup. So anyways, that night, like they were saying, the first night, we were up all day, all night. So it was just like exhaustion. And this is another thing. It's like it pays to not work yourself to death uh, and be that's too when mistakes and be too tired to like do anything because yeah. it was just like in essence we had we had a camera that had two cards that look identical yeah so one was ready to shoot the next day and the other one wasn't and so it was basically we got back to the house and then too tired to back anything up had like whatever our like few hours of sleep because we had to be up right in the morning to go shoot again so like I, I whatever and I don't sleep so it's like probably had a shit sleep, got to the, wherever our location at the Capitol. And it was just like, literally just unconsciously, like it's one of those automatic things where it's like, put the card in, hit the button, whatever, do all the prep stuff. And it was just like, it was, I remember it was like, literally like hit, hit the thing, hit format. And the second I hit the format button, I ripped the card out of the camera because I was like, holy fuck, I haven't checked. Like I didn't like this might like, I th- like in my head, I'm like, that's the, that's the correct card. But it's like, oh fuck, maybe somebody put the, c- whatever. So it's like ripped it out of the camera. But even yeah. by the time that I ripped it out of the camera and the formatting hadn't like finished or anything, the card was already bunged. And so it was like, then I remember fuck. just saying like, yeah, like laying on my back and being like, I'm, I need a, I need a and handgun. Then, and then mentally well, on, on lack of sleep, like that's an extra. Well, now that you say that, Sean, I remember the how that went. Cause we were both just like in utter despair for like for a while and then we're like okay well at least we have the warehouse booked already booked for another day so we don't have to like go to some hassle of like rebooking right and we're just like okay well we got to tell alex and luckily he's like a the nicest dude you'll ever meet and like a a dear friend of ours so we told him and we're like hey like i know this sucks but fran and i decided you know what if we have to reshoot it let's what could we have done better yeah let's plan this out better let's figure out exactly what we need to get because there's like four stages for this video there's like different stages of right the same well that thing. was that was going to be my next question is yeah. that when you had to go back and redo it i did, think was it easier the second go around because you already knew i honestly little... think it was it wasn't that it was easier it's that we'd already we knew exactly what we needed to get mm-hmm. and we knew i think it it, it, it the product was much better right. because so we had to go back and so I'd, I'd say this like of all the things like if that's going to happen, like a card's going to be deleted that day, the best card got deleted because we didn't lose any of the stuff we shot outside. And we had spent a, a big part of the day. Like one thing that was super tedious on the day was we did a ton of stop motion stuff. So that ate up like hours of the day doing the stop motion. But that was all on a separate camera. So like, luckily we didn't have to go to any outdoor locations. We just had to go back to this one location that we had booked already. Mm -hmm. So it was like of all the cards that could have gotten formatted and shit that could have gotten deleted, that was probably the best one. And also the shoot too. Cause it was, again, that was with a friend who was chill about it. Yeah. Not like some big client who was going to be like upset that they had to come back from Regina or something. I guess if I have to, um, My, I, I don't think, you know, I'm, I, I'm just going to switch the question or not question a little bit, but I just had a really important thought, I think, to kind of give you a bit more insight into filmmaking. Like a lot of the stuff that I handle is like before the cameras are charged up and things are packed up. Like I do all the booking locations, booking the makeup artists, okay. uh, booking the actors, making sure like doing the call yeah. sheets, making Logistics. sure everybody's on time, all the logistical stuff. And I think that 
for me, there's two sides to it. I really do enjoy that aspect of it. I think I, I'm pretty good at it. Um, like I'm, It's like the puppet master. Yeah, right? like doing all the behind the scenes stuff, like yeah, making yeah. sure that like when we show up, the people are there. So there, there's, there's good and bad to that. I really enjoy that stuff. The downside of that is that when we have a really intensive, for example, like a narrative shoot and we have like, you know, all the costuming and like we have a bunch of actors like you sometimes we go through a talent agent, which is the best case scenario because I send the talent agent the call sheet. She sends it to everyone else. It's like, if that person doesn't show up, the talent agent fucked up, not me. Right. Um, but when it's like, hey, my bandmates want to be in the video and they want to act in it. It's like, well, first of all, from production side, that's hell because like, I don't know if they can act. Um, but, you know, now I have to email like eight different people independently. And I'm, I'm tr like, I literally have to open a Word document and be like, I have emailed this person on this date. This person has not gotten back to me. And like to make sure that every fucking person is, yeah. is on the same page because I'm not going to show up like, oh yeah, you never emailed Sherry that last time. She doesn't know that we switched from 930 till 1030. So, and, and a lot of the time, like I, when I'm booking locations, like, Hey man, can we use your bar? It's like, yeah, if you come for an hour, I'm like, well, we'll make it work in an hour then I guess. So a lot of the times when I have an intensive pre-production, not like from yeah, the creative side, right. but from the logistical side, by the time we show up at the shoot, I'm like fucking wasted from the project already. Like I'm so done with it. Yeah. It's like, okay, we showed up, everybody showed up on time. I'm, and I'm done. I'm done. You know, and I'm not like, I'm still there to work and stuff. Yeah, but, I get it. But the mental like, me being interested in the creativity is lessened so much. Right. I think that, for example, like the I Am Horizon shoot, I had to book a location and tell the guys when to get there. So by the time we get there, I'm like, I'm excited about being a little bit more creative and like, where can we put lights yeah. and like, what, what can we make different about yeah, this? Yeah, because you didn't burn up all your energy Ex organizing it. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like, I'm just, and a lot of times it's like, the fucking day, it's like, text this person and like even small things like do they even have my fucking phone number like yeah, what? yeah. I'm, I'm not like does this person I'm like, this person i'm emailing but this one's texting me and facebook like, messenger for that <laughs> person <laughs> isn't it bad when you're like when you're talking to the same person but on like three or four different platforms right like through email instagram oh, facebook know. messenger it's like hey fuck can we just just give me your number dude like <laughs> yeah, i'll just call you and yeah, we like, can call oh uh, yeah so that's that and like to answer your question about hitting a wall I think that kind of is my wall, I guess. Right. It's it's so nice that we have the team that we have so that when we show up, if if you know, if I don't have that creative drive, obviously like Fran or Andrew can handle it or yeah. like that stuff can be offloaded. And the thing is like, you know, sure, could we share the responsibility of the booking stuff, but that doesn't work. Like you can't have three people you have too many hands in the cookie jar, man. You, like I need to be the one who mm -hmm. says like these are the emails, CC these yep. people, and like, you know, a week ahead of time, Frank gets a call sheet. And it's like, we don't even need to talk about it. He can read it when he has time. Yep. And, you know, he'll know when the people are need to be there. Or he doesn't even need to worry about that. It's like, right. we show up on site, it's like, when are they going to be here? They're going to be here at 1030. What time is it now? All right, 950. Okay, we have time to do this, this, right. and that. Our so, dynamic is usually such that, like, I kind of float between the two worlds of what Brad does and what Fran does a lot of the time. And I'm usually kind of aware of what Brad's got going on and helping a day of helping to like manage and coordinate that stuff. Yeah. And then also kind of being a go between sort of between right. what Fran's doing and what Brad's doing and trying to like give my input, my help and support. Yeah. yeah and and you know, place. a lot of it helps, especially now where we're at. When we started out, the budgets were so skimpy Yeah, and the timelines were so tight. So it's like we show up to, for example, a bar and it's like, you know, small things that now I don't even give a shit about. Like, uh, okay, they need to be drinking beer. It's like, fuck, are we going to spend $25 on beers at this place? Like, that's yeah. eaten into our bottom line. Yeah. And now it's just like, you know, budgets, we have a little bit more money to work with. So it's like, well, fuck it. I, you know, I didn't bring beer from home to save money. If we need to buy a pint, we'll buy a pint. Or, yeah. And a lot of the times the place will just See, help but that's out. But that's the same with anything in, in like, I guess, for the industry, when you're starting out, like as a musician or a videographer or whatever, when you're starting, you're, you're at like the bottom. Like you've got nothing. So you have to work with what you have, right? And as you, you're putting out the consecutive, consistent content and, and it's always getting better. Like I was saying, like our show is still evolving. It's never been the same two weeks in a row because it's like, oh, what what fucked up there? What like now we'll change it for next week. And then it's always just the little things. So it always feels like something's different all the time. I totally get what you're saying, man. Which I think, you know, talking kind of circling back to our podcast in particular, last year we got our sweatshirt. 
it just does a live cut recording multiple camera angles. Oh, I fucking it, love that. It, early on, we tried to do like set up GoPros and edit the fucking thing. And inordinate it, amount it of burnt time. us out. And the other thing is like, I think it's very much like being a fucking mechanic where it's like, or it's like, uh, who's the least healthy? It's the doctor because he doesn't want to go home and do doctor stuff or he doesn't want to fucking fix do his the own paperwork car because he fucking and... fixes his own car or fixes other yeah. people's cars all day. So it's like, fuck, I don't want to edit this thing. And this is just like a gift. It's like, well, it's edited and done. You know, we can throw a, a logo on the beginning. Fran does an awesome job making the animated intros, which look fucking wicked every year and better and better. I love that. I can, yeah, and I can see it at the, over there, like how the, how he's switching the camera angles and stuff. That's so kick-ass. Like us, it's very like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so like stationary. Like we just have legit. We, we But I think your content's really good. You know, I watched that episode and, and having the Zoom call thing has a level of production to it that really sells it to me as more than just like two guys in a fucking laptop camera or whatever. Right. I think I watched that theory episode. Uh, number one, the content's really interesting. Those guys were kick-ass. Like, the the they're are, so fucking funny. Dude. The guests are super good. And just having people on a Zoom call, like I don't even, I guess we would, it. we would have to feed from a computer into our, it would just be not fun to try and do a Zoom call into the switcher. We could figure it out because we can, I can turn it well, so the, it, it, it switches we itself to. though. Yeah. So we have it just set so whoever the speaker is, the camera goes to them, right? So it's just and, plain but that, Jane. But that's, <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. You know, right? I don't because things made easier does not necessarily mean they're worse. Right. You know, I, yeah. I, I, from my perspective, when I watch it and I'm in video production, I don't think about like, oh yeah, Zoom switches on its own. Those guys are really lazy. This sucks. Yeah. I, I really like that. And I, I think that the in-house stuff is good too. Like that kit one was awesome. But like, yeah. See that, see, and those are fun and stuff, but but like you said, it's like, fuck, now I got to edit that now. Yeah. Right? Like now I got to, like, well, and actually I don't have to. I choose to. Yeah. I want to because I like, I want to try and help these artists get it, like get their name out there. Like they're good artists. They're, I love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing what I can to try and help promote them and make, like, I'm not, I learned on the fly. I don't have a clue what the frick I'm doing, man. I'm just using like DaVinci Resolve and I had to learn that. So if I don't know how to do a cut or a, or a transition, I'm like, YouTube, how do I transition in DaVinci Resolve? And then there's like a little two minute video so as I'm editing it and then that's how I do it, right? But it's like- I feel like it's how most people learn software these days, like- It's it's the best way. Instead of going to, I, I think instead of going to a school and being taught it for eight months, it's like, I just want to do this one little thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, can you just like show I think, me I think we're to, school, what to push, what to click? I think where school know? can be beneficial is if you don't have the constant need to use it. Like school gives you projects to practice right. whatever on. But if you're just gonna, if you're already like diving in and you have projects to work on or that, and that creative drive to just keep practicing right. and learning, yeah. then school's probably not as, not as relevant. But if right. you, the kind of person who needs that like structure and motivation. Yeah, I also like, yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing that I do, I'm thankful of education for is particularly in Francois training because there are certain filmmaking things, some, some Just certain rules. bases yeah. and rules that like, if you Google, like, what the fuck do I, like, you never get that, you know, it's like, yeah. what are the base rules? So there are certain things like that I still struggle with. Like mm -hmm. this character is on the left side of the frame. So if the other person's talking, they have to be on the right side of the frame. And like, it's just shit I forget. And that's not, you know, like I have a, a bit of an eye for cinematography and I can do some camera movement with the steady cam and stuff. But yeah, where, where Francois was like, you know, because there are certain fundamental rules in filmmaking where it's like, if we fuck this up on the day of, the shit is now unusable. Like right. now the video is fucking unusable because you will, as the audience, you are trained because of the way <laughs> cinematography is done in feature films that if you see that rule broken, your mind without even knowing what happened will be like, something is not right here and this is not does not look good right it's just like subconsciously you the yeah. right like you get it's, it's, like it's a, stuff that you don't notice consciously you don't, you don't notice it but you notice when it's off right you don't notice when it's done right you just notice if it's fucked up you're like what yeah, what happened what, there yeah, yeah something's up here i love watching like when we watch movies janelle janelle and i we're always like looking for a mistake in a movie, like for example, the Game of Thrones thing where there was like a fucking Tim Hortons cup or whatever in it, right? Yeah. I love looking for that kind of shit. We were actually just watching a show where we found one. Um, was it Dexter? I got, I can't remember what the hell we were watching. I, it'll come back to me, but there was like a scene where he's like cooking spaghetti on, on, at the stove. 
and there's a there's a camera shot of the noodles in the pot and the water's already drained and everything. It shows that he made the spaghetti. And then right away the next scene, he's draining the water out of this. And it's like, what? Like it was already fucking yeah, there was no water in that yeah, pot, you know? You know that's yeah. Shit like that. I love trying to, sure. to find that kind of shit all the time. You should do a music video with nothing but fucking mistakes Con- like that. Continuity errors. <laughs> <laughs> Intentional to, continuity yeah, errors. Yeah, and, and then you have to have, like, who can find all the fucking, the fuck-ups in it. And and I think that, I mean, obviously, feature films and TV shows are so long that to try and see all that stuff. When we're doing a one-day shoot, it's like, yeah, I, there are some times where it's like. There's minor. Is anybody ever going to notice this? No, but we fix it anyway just because it'll bug the hell out of us. And right. Like, there I are totally, certain things I, I can I go through it. our music videos and pick out shit that's like. You would never fucking tell, but it drives me fucking crazy. Dude, I, I totally get it. That's like that lava lamp that's behind me in the... I had to just... I We can't turn this on anymore because if I make a cut, then the lava lamp is off or, or there was that thing that was spinning and I was like, fuck, we, got it. we can't turn that on because yeah. it just looks <laughs> stupid when I make a cut. I want to try and do a cut where you don't see a cut. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, we got to leave that shit off. When we do interviews, two camera angles make everything so nice because oh, yeah. you can't fucking tell. And like we can piece together some garbage interviews with and make lots of ums and ahs. Yeah, like Sounded. we had this one person, like the, like this episode, making me look good, yeah. right? That we delivered, and she was like, <laughs> "Wow, I can't believe how bad I sounded and how good you guys made me look at the end of this thing." Right? Oh, wow. You know, I'm like, I'm getting real good at that. If they repeat themselves or say "um" in between, mm. like I'm taking half the word "them" and "them," and then I'm blending the two together, switching oh, the camera angle so you can't even that's tell. That's fucking yeah. it's genius. Like, hey, she, it's like and then make sure the tongue's in the same spot. It's like Mozart, then, man. Oh, it's it's fucking... It, it's fun. I like I like doing, like, transitions and stuff like that. I'm, I'm no good at it. Oh, but I know sure I'll, I'll get better at it. But I, I like doing that stuff. The cuts. I'm... Audio's a bitch. <laughs> Audio's a fucking bitch to try. Like, we did an episode with uh, Caitlin Leonard. And I tried to, like, grab clips of her music video. Like, she sang the song on the show and said, yeah, like, go ahead, put it out, whatever. So... I, she did it acoustically, but I wanted to take the video from her music video and just kind of have it in the corner and sync that up with her audio. But obviously it's not the same audio. Yeah. So I had to like do like in splurts. And even then I didn't, like, it wasn't perfection. That's but. like when we have bands and they're like, oh no, we'll just play it. This doesn't happen anymore, but it's like, yeah, we'll just play it. This We'll just play it. We don't want a click track. I'm like, no, you're playing to a click track or we're packing the camera equipment up. Yeah, because I know, yeah, cause it's I know good, this could fucking turn out. Fucking right. I will say like one, one thing that was kind of a bigger, sort of a milestone, maybe just for us, but in, uh, the, we had a shoot recently where we had mix up with the actors and we weren't sure if the actors that were showing up we, we went to all the pains possible to make sure they were exactly what we needed, were comfortable with, with the shoot. And we had to change on the fly. And we were like, at, in our pre-production meeting, we're asking like, well, what if, what are we going to do? What's our plan B if they show up and it's it's we not working out? They can't, they, the chemistry is not there. They can't go right. off. And we were thinking about it for a second. We're like, honestly, like we canceled the shoot and build the talent, build, build the agency for not being able to not delivering on a right. thing and it was like normally early on in our career it would be like oh well we just we just have to figure you this have out to, yeah, we have to figure you, this you out you gotta do it yeah yeah and and it was a kind of a, a cool moment to be able to be like you know what no like we're not compromising yeah, we're not there's, compromising. there's a lot of power well maybe not power but there's something in saying no yeah right like mm-hmm. people who are early on starting out and everything it's they're almost like yes men Right. You got to say, and I've talked about this on the show before too. Like you, you say yes to everything because you want to, you want to get out there. You want to like have that content or product out there as much as possible, but that's not always the best thing. No, certainly. Like, and, and I've, I've learned that too, not just in like the podcast stuff, but just in life in general. Like you can't yeah. say yes all the time. No, certainly not. Like you need, like you Part said. Of growing. It, yeah. Hell yeah, man. There's and I, I am yeah, like, we've got no place where I have no problem sending a band a budget that is accurate and then them not taking us up on it. It's like, well, I'm not, we're not doing this for cheaper. So yeah, you're, this wa- is what you're it welcome is. to compromise the project and go to someone else. We can try and downplay your project to make it fit our budget, bit fit your budget. But you know, yeah, but you can't, you that, can't like baseline. give your guaranteed stamp on that. The, 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 in the vision 
Mm-hmm. Right? That we'll is come it, to reality. Yeah, yeah. And, exactly. And I'm not, we're not doing it for free anymore. You know, that's the whole thing. And like, yeah. At the level we're at. That's a nice comfortable area to be. Freaking mm-hmm. right, dude. Mm-hmm. I, I love what you guys are doing. And I love that we're all friends. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're yeah. legit friends. It's, it's, like, you're fucking deadly, man. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, um, this is probably a decent place to end. Uh, Joel, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's coming up? Tell us a little bit more about the the music festival and oh hell yeah you know what i want to let's call this like an i i feel like as the ceo of moose fest i can announce this and and just say where we're at right now so for for moose fest 2022 it will be august 6th in bellevue saskatchewan Saskatchewan. like we have the date location is like 80 percent locked in right now i'm working on a different one um, but the way I'm organizing it is if I do get the one that I legitimately want, I can just kind of pick, things pick up it up and, and move it there. Right. And, and everything else will go as planned. But it will be in Bellevue, Saskatchewan, August 6, 2022. Bands that I have locked in for sure right now is I've got five of them and they're all kick ass, dude. Like, I'm do tell. Yeah, you want to. I just, <laughs> I know, I'm hesitant, but, yeah. but I'll, I'll totally do it. So right now we have. You don't have to. Well, uh. When is this being released? Uh, a few days. In a couple days? Okay, I'm going to say it, and if I need Francois to bleep it out, I'll let you guys know. Okay. <laughs> but um, So right now we have Weapons. We have The Hour Hand out of Regina, uh, Northern Royals out of Winnipeg, as well as Exo Murder out of Winnipeg, and Trader's Gate from Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. So those five are for sure. They're They're in right now. And then there'll be the winner of Clash at the Cap 2 will be on that bill as well. And we're working on a headliner right now. There's a couple like bigger bands that we're in negotiating with. I won't met, drop, name drop of any course. of those right now. But but in all reality, if I if it didn't pan out or it wasn't in the budget to get those headliners, I don't give a shit, man, because all five of those bands are, in yeah, my they opinion, slap. they're yeah, all they headliners they right now. Yeah. Like I think they're very underpaid right now and should be yeah, out there, right? They just don't so, quite have that audience to... That's Well, and that's what Moose Fest is should, all about, yeah. right? It's to help promote them and, and do whatever we can to help support them. And and we, we're legit fans of their music. So fuck yeah, dude. Really slap. It's going to yeah. be awesome. All those, all those bands are like they're, as you said, they're freaking deadly. Like, dude, and I've yeah. got so many ideas of what I want to do. So we made, we ended up making Moose Fest a nonprofit charitable organization. Yeah. So like I'm really looking for I'm still looking for like a, a major sponsor, which I'm negotiating with a few right now. Um, but like one idea I have that we'll talk about in uh, off camera is I want you guys to come out there and like I want to do a deal with you guys and work with you guys to to film it. It'd be awesome to have like a a fucking highlight reel of a music. Hell yeah. Like I'm thinking like if we can get like three songs of each band and then we'll put it together. Like this was Moose Fest 2022 or something like that. Sweet. Let's yeah. Let's, um, Let's maybe end here. Yeah, and... awesome. Well, uh, Joel, thank you very much for having me. Dude, it was an honor. Coming like, I, I'm, it was an honor. I'm glad oh, you could make it. The weather wasn't the best today, but... Uh, I, I fucking love you guys, man. You yeah. guys kick so much ass. Um, so yeah. definitely uh, check out Moose Fest uh, coming up this next year. Check out the Sit Down Podcast. Follow them on their socials. Instagram at... Uh, Funky Moose Records. Funky Moose Records. And yeah, that's there'll, there'll be updates for everything there. And make sure to give them a follow. You and bet. join us for episode... Uh, five. <laughs> the next episode is five, yeah. which will yeah. happen subsequent from this one. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Merry Christmas. <laughs>